Welcome to Moving to the Next Step with Digital Preservation, the Digital Preservation Assessment from NADCC. My name is Frances Harrell. I'm the Senior Preservation Specialist with NADCC, and today I'll be walking you through the Digital Preservation Assessment process, um, and at the end I'll wrap up with some ideas for how you might fund a Digital Preservation Assessment. So the first question to address is why would you engage in a digital preservation assessment? Um, and the answer here is that assessment is one of the foundational tasks in preservation planning. So you can see here, we can start with an assessment and what that helps lead you to is determining priorities at your institution for preservation actions that you might take, preservation interventions that your collections need. It can help you then identify resources in order to meet those priority actions, um, help you think about how you will pull together the financial resources, the human resources, and the amount of time that you might need for certain projects. Um, and also helps you with advocacy for your collection in general, um, an assessment along with your collection priorities, your action priorities, and an idea of your resources gives you a really specific picture for the needs of your collection that you can use to advocate to funders and administrators um, for improvements to your collection. And this is arranged in a cycle because the this is an ongoing process. Um, every time you make improvements, you go ahead and uh, do a reassessment over time. And this is how we do iterative improvement um, with preservation planning. So now I'm just gonna talk you through the actual digital preservation assessment. We'll look at all the categories that your consultant will be um, investigating as they work with you. Um, it covers policy and planning pieces of digital preservation and also technical pieces. So first, when you start working with your consultant, you will start with a questionnaire. Uh, this collects details about your organization, your staff, and your collections. It's also going to ask about digital preservation practice at your institution and training. It's going to help your consultant as they prepare for your site visit, help them get the context in mind um, and prepare your interview schedule. Um, it's also going to help them as they write their report because they'll be able to refer back to the details that you give them in this questionnaire as they are doing their analysis and reporting. It's good to be detailed and accurate, but it's also important not to get overwhelmed by the questionnaire. It's normal to not be able to answer every question, um, and it also is very normal to need to work with other departments within your institution to find out some of these answers. Um, it can be a collaborative process. It also can help set the expectations um, internally for what areas of your program are going to be um, discussed with your consultant. So this is where you start. You'll return your questionnaire to your consultant a few weeks before um, your site visit uh, so that they have time to um, review the information and do their preparation. Then you come to the site visit, which is the next piece of your digital preservation assessment. Uh, your consultant will come and visit you for a day or they'll arrange a series of video conferences if you determine that a remote assessment is more feasible for your organization um, or for the consultant. Um, Either way, with an in-person site visit or video conference site visit, uh, your consultant will conduct several interviews with different functions at your institution. This will include administrative functions, technical support functions, and collections management, collections care functions. And what they're trying to do is really flesh out the picture that you started to give them when you filled out your questionnaire. Um, and they'll be going a little bit in depth into each of the areas to try to really understand where your institution is and where you'd like to be. 
These are the assessment facets that your consultant will be looking at. Um, the first section is the organizational infrastructure in place at your institution. Um, they'll be looking at the organizational structure, so reporting structures, whether um, you have committees in place or um, you know how large or small your staff is and how decision making gets made at your institution. They'll also be looking at your um, community, your audiences, um, who uses your collections, how do you engage those uh, user groups. The second facet is staff and resources. Um, this isn't just sort of, you know, the amounts. This is kind of uh, the practices at your institution. So what are the roles that uh, staff members have? What are their job descriptions? Um, they'll be looking at professional development and uh, your peer networks. So who <clears throat> are there other organizations that you work with closely? Are there other colleagues that your staff relies on? Um, and then they'll also be looking at your budgeting and resources. Um, so, you know, this is budgeting practice, not, not just how much uh, money you have to spend on, on preservation, but they'll also be looking at, you know, areas that uh, you might need some improvement. The third section is the policy infrastructure section. Um, your consultant will be looking at your mission and strategic planning for preservation purposes. Um, and then they'll dig a little deeper into digital preservation policies, uh, things like your collection development policy, whether you have any preservation plans already in place. And they'll also be looking at um, sort of ad hoc practices that you might be able to formalize into policies. So not just your written policies, but you know some things that might uh, that are helping you that that might need to be a little more formalized. The fourth facet, processes and workflows, gets a little bit more into the nuts and bolts of doing digital preservation. Um, your consultant will be looking at how you do reformatting, how you bring in born digital objects, if that's a part of your collecting mandate, uh, your metadata approach, and your documentation in general. And then finally, they'll be looking at technological resources. Um, this is where they'll be looking at things that may sound a little more traditional for uh, thinking about digital preservation gap analysis. Um, so they'll be talking to you about IT support, um, kind of the, the preservation management tools that you use, any software or hardware, uh, what your storage approach is, and also thinking about um, permissions and security for your uh, collections. So these are the five major areas that your consultant will be looking at. And the way that they will be performing this analysis is by starting with risk assessment. So this is an example of how a consultant might think about a risk assessment in a couple different facets. So if they're looking at roles and responsibilities, one risk they might find is something like this. IT manager is determining storage and redundancy approaches without help from the collection staff. So what they might identify there is that there is a risk of um, an inappropriate approach because certain roles and responsibilities are not um, optimized. So at that point, they'll just be identifying that this might be a risk. Um, and here's another example in, in the designated community, which really describes your audience. Um, they might find that the, your library or, or institution has a statement defining the target users, which they would identify as a low risk. That's a very, that's a good practice. So they aren't just looking at um, what might be in need of improvement. They'll also be trying to identify um, strong practices at your institution. <clears throat> so then what they do with that analysis uh, to bring it into something uh, that looks more like a report to give back to you, they will describe their, their observation, which will identify the risk or the good practice. And then <clears throat> they'll form that into a recommendation that identifies a strategy to reduce the risk or a strategy to enhance your good practice. So in this example, um, the consultant might find that the mission of the organization does not include mention of collections or their preservation. 
So what they would suggest is that um, the mission be updated to include preservation and specifically digital preservation in the mission. So then your consultant will take these ideas and form them into a report to send back to you. Um, and the structure of the report uh, looks a little bit like this, where for each facet, there will be a short um, good practice description. It's really to give you and your organization context for what the consultant was looking at in your in each facet. So for organizational structure, there's a little bit of definition here and um, some context around what we think a an adequate organizational structure would provide. Um, and then after that, in the observations and recommendations, they will write out in prose what they observed and what they saw, and then give you a bulleted list of some recommendations for improving practice. Um, what's important to note is that the report is not a checklist for your organization to start at the top and go to the bottom. Um, it's, it's good to think about it more as a menu of options and interventions you might uh, put into a short or medium term preservation plan. Um, your consultant will try to help you think about prioritizing these interventions. They'll identify things that are particularly high risk. But since preservation planning is really an iterative um, task, it will be up to you to decide, you know, what needs to happen this year, what needs to happen in the next three years, and in the next five years. Um, so the report will help you put a roadmap together, but it itself is not exactly a final roadmap for you. But of course, your consultant is always available after they've given you your report to help you translate that into a roadmap um, if you want to get in touch with them. So now I'll just finish up with how you might fund an assessment. Um, these are just some major state and uh, federal funding organizations that support preservation work, um, but you can always check grants.gov for federal grants um, and uh, search through what's available for your organization. So the first one I want to mention is the Institute of Museum and Library Services, the IMLS. <clears throat> the IMLS is a federal funding agency. They fund museums and libraries of all kinds, and there are some targeted grants for tribal organizations and African American history museums. Some of these, uh, some of the grants they have available that specifically support preservation are the ones you see here, Museums for America, the Museum's Grant for African American History and Culture, and the Native American Native Hawaiian Museum Services Program. For eligibility and deadlines, again, check grants.gov. The National Endowment for the Humanities is another federal granting agency. Uh, it funds all sorts of organizations, not just libraries and museums, um, anyone that is stewarding the historical record. Uh, the grants available for preservation, these are a couple really good ones. Uh, the Preservation Assistance Grant is one of the most major grants for uh, funding assessments. And if you haven't worked on a preservation grant before, we highly suggest you start with a Preservation Assistance Grant from the NEH. Um, and then another one that can uh, support preservation is the Humanities Collections and Reference Resources Grant. And you can check neh.gov for eligibility and deadlines. The National Historic Re uh, Publications and Records Commission, the NHPRC, is the granting arm of the Library of Congress, and it supports access to America's historical records. These are a couple um, potential grant programs for preservation, the Access to Historical Records arch Archival Projects and Access to Historical Records Major Initiatives. And here are some others that also support preservation of historic collections. The National Endowment for the Arts, specifically if you are stewarding digital media art, if you are a museum that works in digital art, um, the, they have 
the Artworks Museums grant that's specifically for enhancing collections care. Uh, the Foundation for the American Institute of Conservation is an independent nonprofit that supports conservation in America, and they administer the Collections Assessment Program, the CAP program. Um, that may also be a very good place to look for a, an initial assessment if you've never had one before. And the American Association of Museums, if you are a museum, um, also does the uh, administers the museum assessment program, which has several different um, tracks, but there is a collections care version of the museum assessment program um, that would uh, help you with your digital objects as well. And don't forget your state funders. Here's a couple ideas for state funders. The State Historical Records Advisory Boards um, are administered at the state level. Um, these are re-grants from the NHPRC. Not every state has a very active and granting SHRAB, um, so you'll need to look into it. Um, but since they are administered at the state level, uh, each state determines how those funds are allocated and what um, projects they are looking for. So take a look, see what your state is into funding um, from that level. And then you also might look at the at list of grants, Library Services and Technology Act. These are often um, administered by state library administrative agencies. Um, so these are also administered at state level and fund a wide range of activities. Um, so you should check out what your state does as far as list of grants go and uh, see if there are uh, programs that you might be eligible for. As always, if you have questions about this uh, service um, or any other preservation questions, you can get in touch with us at the center. Feel free to call us during work hours at 978-470-1010. You'll definitely get connected with somebody in the Preservation Services Department, or you can email me directly at fharrell at nedcc.org, and I'm very happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much.